Sphere. The Humanitarian Charter and Minimum Standards. Part 2. What are the Sphere Standards? As mentioned in presentation part 1 the Sphere Standards are a set of principles and minimum humanitarian standards aiming to improve the quality and accountability of the humanitarian sector in four technical areas of humanitarian response. Water supply, sanitation and hygiene promotion. Food security and nutrition. Shelter and settlement. And health. Water Supply, Sanitation and Hygiene Promotion In this part we are going to explain about Essential Concepts in Water Supply, Sanitation and Hygiene Promotion Water Supply, Sanitation and Hygiene Promotion Standards, which are Hygiene Promotion Water Supply Excreta Management Vector Control Solid Waste Management Wash in disease outbreaks and healthcare settings. Essential concepts in water supply, sanitation, and hygiene promotion. 1. Everyone has the right to water and sanitation. The sphere minimum standards for water supply, sanitation, and hygiene promotion, wash, are a practical expression of the right to access water and sanitation in humanitarian contexts. The standards are grounded in the beliefs, principles, duties, and rights declared in the Humanitarian Charter. These include, the right to life with dignity, the right to protection and security, and the right to receive humanitarian assistance on the basis of need. Two people affected by crises are more susceptible to illness and death from disease, particularly diarrheal and infectious diseases. Such diseases are strongly related to inadequate sanitation and water supplies and poor hygiene. WASH programs aim to reduce public health risks. The main pathways for pathogens to infect humans are faces, fluids, fingers, flies and food. The main objective of WASH programs in humanitarian response is to reduce public health risks by creating barriers along those pathways. In WASH programs, it is important to manage the entire water chain, water sourcing, treatment, distribution, collection, household storage, and consumption. Manage the entire sanitation chain in an integrated manner. Enable positive healthy behaviors. Ensure access to hygiene items. Three Community engagement is crucial. Community engagement in WASH is a dynamic process connecting the community and other stakeholders so that people affected by the crisis have more control over the response and its impact on them. Effective engagement links communities and response teams to maximize community influence to reduce public health risks, provide appropriate, accessible services, improve program quality and establish accountability. It explores the capacity and willingness of the community to manage and maintain WASH systems. Engaging with the community creates an essential understanding of perceptions, needs, coping mechanisms, capacities, existing norms, leadership structures and priorities, as well as the appropriate actions to take. Monitoring and evaluation, including feedback mechanisms, demonstrate whether WASH responses are appropriate or need to be adjusted.
For WASH requires particular considerations in urban areas. Community engagement can be harder in urban areas, where the population density is higher and at-risk groups are less visible. However, in urban areas, public spaces, media and technology can provide the opportunity for broader and more efficient dialogue. Diverse ownership of assets, household in rural areas, public, private mix in urban areas, affects the choice of response options and methods of delivery. Five, a combination of approaches is needed. Market-based assistance can efficiently and effectively meet WASH needs, such as by ensuring access to hygiene items. Cash-based assistance, direct cash and slash or vouchers, should be complemented by other WASH activities, including technical assistance and community engagement. For implementation, options vary from infrastructure construction to hygiene promotion and community mobilization. Generators or temporary toilets can be provided immediately, while an overhaul of water treatment services is a long-term project. Six, these minimum standards should not be applied in isolation. Effective progress in achieving the minimum standards in one area influences progress in other areas. Close coordination and collaboration with other sectors as well as coordination with local authorities and other responding agencies helps ensure that needs are met, that efforts are not duplicated, and that the quality of WASH responses is optimized. Humanitarian organizations should work with the government to progressively raise them. 7. International law specifically protects the right to water and sanitation. The right includes access to a sufficient, safe, and affordable water supply for personal and domestic use, and private, safe and clean sanitation facilities. States are obliged to ensure this right during crises. Safe water and appropriate sanitation facilities are essential to sustain life, health and dignity, prevent death from dehydration, reduce the risk of water dash, sanitation and hygiene related diseases, and Allow for adequate consumption, cooking, and personal and domestic hygienic requirements. 8. The right to water and sanitation is part of the universal rights essential for human survival and dignity, and state and non-state actors have responsibilities to fulfill the right. During armed conflict, for example, Attacking, destroying, removing or making water installations or irrigation works useless is prohibited. 9. Links to the protection principles and the core humanitarian standard. Protection in WASH responses is often considered from the perspective of personal protection and safety, recognizing particular vulnerability during water collection, defecation or menstrual hygiene management. Adapted and inclusive programming is essential to avoid discrimination, reduce potential risks and improve usage or quality of services. For example, ensure that persons with disabilities can access hygiene facilities, and that women or children have appropriately sized containers in which to carry water. Engaging individuals and communities in all stages of the response can help incorporate protection considerations into WASH programs. 1. Hygiene Promotion A standardized approach that relies mostly on teaching messages and distributing hygiene items is unlikely to be very effective. Risks, 
and the perception of risks, vary across contexts. People have different life experiences, coping strategies, and cultural and behavioral norms. It is important to adapt approaches based on analysis of these factors as well as context. Effective hygiene promotion relies on working with the community to mobilize action and contribute to decision making, two way communication and feedback on risks, priorities, and services, and access to and use of wash facilities, services, and materials. Hygiene promotion should build on people's own knowledge of risk and disease prevention to promote positive health seeking behavior. Monitor activities and outcomes regularly to ensure that hygiene promotion and WASH programs evolve. Coordinate with health actors to monitor the incidence of WASH-related diseases such as diarrheal disease, cholera, typhoid, trachoma, intestinal worms, and schistosomiasis. Hygiene Promotion Standard 1.1 Hygiene Promotion People are aware of key public health risks related to water, sanitation and hygiene, and can adopt individual, household and community measures to reduce them. Key Actions 1. Identify the main public health risks and the current hygiene practices that contribute to these risks. 2. Work with the affected population to design and manage hygiene promotion and the wider WASH response. 3. Use community feedback and health surveillance data to adapt and improve hygiene promotion. Hygiene Promotion Standard 1.2 Identification, Access to and Use of Hygiene Items Appropriate items to support hygiene, health, dignity, and well-being are available and used by the affected people. Key Actions 1. Identify the essential hygiene items that individuals, households, and communities need. 2. Provide timely access to essential items. Assess availability of items through local, regional, or international markets. 3. Work with affected populations, local authorities, and other actors to plan how people will collect or buy hygiene items. 4. Seek feedback from affected people on the appropriateness of the hygiene items chosen and their satisfaction with the mechanism for accessing them. Hygiene Promotion Standard 1.3 Menstrual Hygiene Management and Incontinence Women and girls of menstruating age, and males, and females with incontinence, have access to hygiene products and wash facilities that support their dignity and well-being. Key Actions 1. Understand the practices, social norms, and myths concerning menstrual hygiene management and incontinence management, and adapt hygiene supplies and facilities. 2. Consult women, girls, and people with incontinence on the design, siting and management of facilities, toilets, bathing, laundry, disposal and water supply. 3. Provide access to appropriate menstrual hygiene management and incontinence materials, soap, for bathing, laundry and hand washing, and other hygiene items. To water supply. Inadequate water quantity and quality is the underlying cause of most public health problems in crisis situations. There may not be sufficient water available to meet basic needs, so supplying a survival level of safe drinking water is essential. 
The priority is to provide an adequate quantity of water, even if it is of intermediate quality. This may be necessary until minimum standards for both water quantity and quality are met. Water Supply Standard 2.1 Access and Water Quantity People have equitable and affordable access to a sufficient quantity of safe water to meet their drinking and domestic needs. Key Actions 1. Identify the most appropriate groundwater or surface water sources taking account of potential environmental impacts. 2. Determine how much water is required and the systems needed to deliver it. Work with stakeholders to locate water points that allow safe and equitable access for all community members. 3. Ensure appropriate water point drainage at household and communal washing, bathing and cooking areas and hand washing facilities. Water Supply Standard 2.2 Water Quality Water is palatable and of sufficient quality for drinking and cooking, and for personal and domestic hygiene, without causing a risk to health. Key Actions 1. Identify public health risks associated with the water available and the most appropriate way to reduce them. 2. Determine the most appropriate method for ensuring safe drinking water at point of consumption or use. 3. Minimize post-delivery water contamination at point of consumption or use. Free excreta management. An environment free of human excreta is essential for people's dignity, safety, health, and well-being. This includes the natural environment as well as the living, learning and working environments. Safe excreta management is a wash priority. In crisis situations, it is as important as providing a safe water supply. Excreta Management Standard 3.1 Environment free from human excreta All excreta is safely contained on site to avoid contamination of the natural, living, learning, working and communal environments. Key Actions 1. Establish facilities in newly constructed communal settlements or those with substantially damaged infrastructure to immediately contain excreta. 2. Decontaminate any faces contaminated living, learning and working spaces or surface water sources immediately. 3. Design and construct all excreta management facilities based on a risk assessment of potential contamination of any nearby surface water or groundwater source. 4. Contain and dispose of children's and babies' faces safely. 5. Design and construct all excreta management facilities to minimize access to the excreta by problem vectors. Excreta Management Standard 3.2 Access to and use of toilets People have adequate, appropriate, and acceptable toilets to allow rapid, safe and secure access at all times. Key Actions 1. Determine the most appropriate technical options for toilets. 2. Quantify the affected population's toilets requirements based on public health risks cultural habits, water collection and storage. 3. Consult representative stakeholders about the siting, design and implementation of any shared or communal toilets. 
or provide appropriate facilities inside toilets for washing and drying or disposal of menstrual hygiene and incontinence materials. 5. Ensure that the water supply needs of the technical options can be feasibly met. Excreta Management Standard 3.3 Management and maintenance of excreta collection, transport, disposal, and treatment. Excreta management facilities, infrastructure, and systems are safely managed and maintained to ensure service provision and minimum impact on the surrounding environment. Key Actions 1. Establish collection, transport, treatment, and disposal systems that align with local systems, by working with local authorities responsible for excreta management. 2. Define systems for short and long-term management of toilets, especially substructures, pits, vaults, septic tanks, soakage pits. 3. Dislodge the containment facility safely considering both those doing the collection and those around them. 4. Ensure that people have the information, means, tools and materials to construct, clean, repair and maintain their toilets. 5. Confirm that any water needed for excreta transport can be met from available water sources, without placing undue stress on those sources. Or vector control. A vector is a disease-carrying agent. Vectors create a pathway from the source of a disease to people. Vector-borne diseases are a major cause of sickness and death in many humanitarian settings. Most vectors are insects such as mosquitoes, flies and lice, but rodents can also be vectors. Some vectors can also cause painful bites. Vector Control Standard 4.1 Vector Control at Settlement Level People live in an environment where vector breeding and feeding sites are targeted to reduce the risks of vector-related problems. Key Actions 1. Assess vector-borne disease risk for a defined area. To align humanitarian vector control actions with local vector control plans or systems, and with national guidelines, programs, or policies. 3. Determine whether chemical or non-chemical control of vectors outside households is relevant based on an understanding of vector life cycles. Vector Control Standard 4.2 Household and Personal Actions to Control Vectors All affected people have the knowledge and means to protect themselves and their families from vectors that can cause a significant risk to health or well-being. Key Actions 1. Assess current vector avoidance or deterrence practices at the household level as part of an overall hygiene promotion program. 2. Use participatory and accessible awareness campaigns to inform people of problem vectors, high-risk transmission times and locations, and preventive measures. 3. Conduct a local market assessment of relevant and effective preventive measures. 4. Train communities to monitor report and provide feedback on problem vectors and the vector control program. Five Solid Waste Management Solid waste management is the process of handling and disposing of organic and inorganic solid waste. This involves planning solid waste management systems, handling, separating, storing, sorting, and processing waste at source, transferring to a collection point, and 
transporting and final disposal, reuse, repurposing or recycling. Solid Waste Management Standard 5.1 Environment Free from Solid Waste Solid waste is safely contained to avoid pollution of the natural, living, learning, working and communal environments. Key Actions 1. Design the Solid Waste Disposal Program based on public health risks assessment of waste generated by households and institutions, and existing practice. To work with local or municipal authorities and service providers to make sure existing systems and infrastructure are not overloaded, particularly in urban areas. 3. Organize periodic or targeted solid waste cleanup campaigns with the necessary infrastructure in place to support the campaign. 4. Provide protective clothing for and immunous people who collect and dispose of solid waste and those involved in reuse or repurposing. 5. Ensure that treatment sites are appropriately, adequately, and safely managed. 6. Minimize packing material and reduce the solid waste burden by working with organizations responsible for food and household item distribution. Solid Waste Management Standard 5.2 Household and Personal Actions to Safely Manage Solid Waste People can safely collect and potentially treat solid waste in their households. Key Actions 1. Provide households with convenient adequately sized and covered storage for household waste or containers for small clusters of households. 2. Provide clearly marked and fenced public neighborhood collection points where households can deposit waste on a daily basis. 3. Organize a system to regularly remove household and other waste from designated public collection points. 4. Ensure that solid waste burial or burning pits at household or communal levels are safely managed. Solid Waste Management Standard 5.3 Solid Waste Management Systems at Community Level Designated public collection points do not overflow with waste and final treatment or disposal of waste is safe and secure. Key Actions 1. Ensure that institutions such as schools and learning spaces, child-friendly spaces and administrative offices have clearly marked, appropriate and adequate covered on-site storage for waste generated at that location. 2. Provide clearly marked and fenced storage for waste generated in communal areas, especially formal or informal marketplaces, transit centers, and registration centers. Six Wash in disease outbreaks in healthcare settings. Wash and health actors both work to reduce public health risks prevent disease transmission and control disease outbreaks. Strong coordination with government structures and partners, across the two sectors, is needed to address public health risks in the community and in healthcare settings. Standard 6. Wash in Healthcare Settings all healthcare settings maintain minimum wash infection prevention and control standards, including in disease outbreaks. Key Actions 1. Provide a reliable water supply of sufficient quantity and quality, appropriate to the healthcare setting. 2. Provide sufficient excreta disposal facilities to limit disease transmission. 
3. Provide enough cleaning materials and equipment for healthcare workers, patients, and visitors to maintain hygiene. 4. Maintain a clean and hygienic environment. 5. Handle, treat, and dispose of waste correctly. 6. Ensure all healthcare workers, patients, and carers use appropriate PPE. 7. Manage and bury the dead in a way that is dignified, culturally appropriate, and safe according to public health practices.